jawbone.tv. Okay, so the next phase of the process is to bring all the graphical elements and the text, all the story elements into Flash and bring the story to life. Um, I suspect anyone watching the video is familiar with Flash and Photoshop and Illustrator. I'll need to have a bit of an understanding of how they work. Uh, so I lay everything out on the timeline. Um, as you can see here, if I drag the scrubber across the timeline, our first image fades in. Um, the image is a movie clip. Um, by being movie clip, it makes it it makes it um, it allows you to animate it. Uh, if I click inside that movie clip, you get to a separate timeline. I click inside there again. We have our fog animated which you can barely see but that's how it works and that's just um, designed to animate on a loop so I just click backwards for a second uh, kinda like in Illustrator and Photoshop I um, lay all the elements out on the timeline uh, so here's section one if I just uh, move up the timeline a bit I'll get to section 2. Section 2 there's a lot going on so I put it in its own little folder I drop that folder down. You can see all the layers uh, for section 2. Lots of stuff going on. If I move the timeline across again uh, move the scrubber across the timeline again we'll see section 2 fade in and then I have to move the scroll bar along uh, so we can actually see it fade in. So I'll show that fade again I do a slight animation, it fades in, into position, and then over the top of that I um, turn the transparency on for the next uh, image, which is laid over the top, which would be PNGs perhaps, and then the text clicks in over the top of that. And that's pretty much how um, it all lays out in Flash. That's all the text animating in over the top, and here's the uh, transaction taking place. And move the scroll bar along again. There's quite a lot going on in that scene. I also, um, have some basic sound effects laid out on the timeline. Those are these little blue waves here. So if I just tell it to play, you'll hear it. And that sounds like the um, the what's up bar coming out of the vending machine and then um, Johnny John kicking the machine. We'll keep moving along the timeline until we get to we'll keep moving along the timeline until we get to the uh, image that I've been using as an example. So you can see all of the uh, different sections animating out as the story grows. And uh, yeah, here's the culprit that I've been talking about for the last I don't know how long and um, again this is uh, one big movie clip and inside that movie clip is um, a couple of other animated movie clips of all the um, separate elements so if I go inside there we can see another timeline and you can see the um, buildings moving along and the fog's moving the other way. Again, um, I haven't named all my layers like I do in Photoshop and Illustrator. By this, by this point uh, in the process, I've done so much work. I just um, kind of want to get the thing finished. So I get a bit sloppy, but um, you can see I can turn the fog on and off, or the buildings on and off. Um, 
and these are hidden inside a mask just so that they stay within these two um, this black framework so I'll just uh, lock the mask and if I click inside the buildings oh that's the fog I want to click inside the fog, I'll click inside the buildings and then we see um, there's the buildings sort of bobbing up and down and that's just on a loop and then also uh, the sleeper giant itself click inside the sleeper giant um, where the hell is the sleeper giant? here it is and there's the little sleeper giant as separate little images animating along the timeline it's kind of like a gl glitchy glitchy animation and that just plays on a loop as well and because that's inside the building and movie clip which is grouped the two together they all stay in time together okay so that's pretty much the process as um, just for animating and laying it all out as for the um, uh, the interactive side of things, that's another story. Usually a lot of the interaction occurs on these um, next arrows. Uh, when the user clicks those next arrows, um, some actions occur. That's the programming side of things. Um, if I open up my actions window, just bring it into play. Uh, on this particular button, I'll just drop it up here for a second. I've got a few things happen. Uh, it says on release, so when the uh, user releases their button, I tell an audio sound to play, um, underbridge theme ambient, so I'm chilled out sort of ambient track that Jordo, my sound guy, made. And then I tell the currently uh, the sound that's currently playing, which is the North Step intro loop, to fade out over a. Um, so there's the playing the audio sound under bridge theme uh, ambient and then I'm telling um, at the same time to stop the current audio playing which is the North Step intro loop and I tell that to fade out over a duration of 0.5 seconds and um, as for the sound that's coming in there's all these variables here I just um, a lot of them I don't use but some of them I do number of loops, I just say like 999, I, for some reason in Flash you can't just say like loop infinite, infinitely, so you just put a big number like 999 in there instead, um, then there's other vari variables like fade duration, um, yep, so I just tell it to fade in over a period of 5, 0.5 seconds, just half a second, um, and the end volume to be 100, later on I might tell the volume just to go down to 50 if I want it, um, some other sound too be louder or whatever and then the most important thing is um, moving the issue along so when the when the uh, user clicks the arrows I need it to move along um, to a certain point usually like 500 pixels to the left or something like that um, to make room for the next image that's about to appear and at the same time I uh, set the scroll size which is um, the scroll size is evaluating the whole width of the entire issue uh, as it grows so every time um, a new element of the issue uh, of the story comes in like a new image the that's you say if that new image is 500 pixels wide then um, the scroll size which might currently be 4200 has to grow to 4500 and the move issue which it might have previously been 3100 has to grow to 3600 to accommodate the new image and then I just tell underscore parent dot play which means tell the main timeline to play move along and this is referring to this main timeline so that's just saying play the main timeline and we get to the next part of the story and that's pretty much how it works in a nutshell over and out, thank you very much for your time. It's been most pleasurable. I hope to talk to you all again very soon. Bye-bye. Take care. 
jawburn.tv